Hi students, welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada, situated on the southern tip of beautiful Vancouver Island, which is a large uh, island about 600 kilometers long and a couple hundred kilometers wide. Doesn't really feel like an island when you're on it. Uh, welcome uh, to all of our viewers. I see we have lots of people in the class already. Welcome, Veer Paul. Hi, Viet. Hi, Rumi. Shushant. Rajveer. Welcome to our members, uh, Kyber. Uh, welcome to our chat moderator, Carolina. Good to have you here with us helping to keep the chat clean and the class effective. Good to see everyone. Um, in uh, this class, we are looking at IELTS Speaking Part 1. We uh, start the week with IELTS Speaking Part 1 because it's a great way to engage your English fluency, your thinking in English, uh, getting you to focus on specific topics, uh, picking up specific vocabulary, for those specific topics. So uh, this um, week's live classes, we are starting off with the topic of habits. Um, habits are basically routine behaviors. So they are actions and behaviors that we do regularly, such as brushing our teeth can be a habit, which is a good habit, of course. Um, today is July 7th. And this lesson, as usual, is presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS help and success, definitely visit us there. Uh, for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of information to help you uh, succeed on your next um, IELTS exam. We have original practice exams, a fully interactive course. Uh, we have uh, an app for your phone. Um, and all you need to do is click this big red button that's just right above my head here uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are now a British Council IELTS Test Registration Center for certain countries. We're British Council certified agents. We're IDP partners. Uh, we are arguably the most popular online IELTS preparation platform in the world. So you're in great hands with us uh, for your IELTS studies to maximize your score and your investment. Um, when you uh, get our premium package, use the discount code uh, IDEA. 25 so idea 25 we still have this discount code idea 25 welcome for this to academic ielts success uh, world leaders in ielts skills and Whoop, stop that okay um so general ielts same idea gieltshelp.com click this big red button to join our premium package again one-time payment lifetime access I'm sure some of our regular viewers are like, yes, we know you do this every single class, but it's for the new viewers, everyone. So I appreciate your patience and understanding for that uh, blurb. It helps us help you. Um, so again, idea uh, 25 uh, is what you want to use. Um, and uh, if you have questions, uh, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my uh, contact. Uh, you can ask me about um, IELTS, you can ask me about English, immigration, um, application to school. We will do our best to uh, give you um, useful answers. Um, our apps in your app store, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Get the apps, link them to the websites. Now, um, this week uh, we've got uh, classes today, tomorrow, uh, Saturday. Okay, um, so we have um, reading uh, tomorrow for members, uh, followed by listening parts three and four. That's uh, continuing from last week's part one and two, so um, definitely check out that video uh, and 
catch up if you can. Uh, then we'll have task one on Saturday, so task one writing Saturday, and we will uh, have speaking part three on Saturday as well. So two classes uh, tomorrow on Friday, two classes on Saturday. And now we have started using Light Hall regularly, free classes so far. Um, Light Hall, the schedule for um, July. I'm gonna try to stick this whole schedule, Light Hall schedule into the chat. Okay. Uh, let's see if that'll work. Does it fit the whole skit? No, <laughs> I have to. I'm being a bit ambitious. Not more than 200 characters. Um, okay, so um, let me do it this way. So here's our light hall schedule. Uh, the first class uh, we have coming up is on July 13th, so make sure to register for that. Uh, light hall is a premium. Um, uh, live teaching platform it's very effective it's real time you can video chat with me you can actually sh we can see each other like the real computer-based IELTS speaking exam and then uh, we will have um, classes on the 24th 25th um, pay attention students the 13th will be a Wednesday the 24th and the 31st will be Sundays um, the last two Sundays of July and the class on the 24th is a bit earlier than the one on the 13th and the 31st. So uh, do note the schedule, register for the classes on Light Hall, and boom, you're off to the races. Um, check out videos uh, on our um, YouTube channel. We just released this one. It's the most popular speaking video on YouTube right now for IELTS. Uh, we regularly release videos, materials, so subscribe, hit the notification button, you're good to go, you're golden. All right, um, all of that aside, IELTS speaking part one, by the way, students, we will use the website today to speak to students, so get ready for that. Um, IELTS speaking it's challenging, it's stressful, it's important, and yes, you can. You can get a great score. You're all beautiful, smart people, and with the right attitude uh, and with the right strategies, the right preparation, you can get a wonderful score. We've had lots of great um, reviews uh, over the past few months with students getting band seven, band eight, uh, in their IELTS speaking following these strategies. So you can do a wonderful job. Just stay calm, focus on yourself, focus on the strategies, and you will do great. Okay, I genuinely believe that, okay? Uh, tip number one is uh, go to, let's just do it this way, strategy one, uh, go to your exam early, and uh, speak English for at least one hour before your test so that your brain is in English when you walk into the exam. This one tip can really get you an extra band score. It takes a while for the mind to really switch into gear in communication. Um, and uh, if you're trying to do that in the 15 minutes that you're in the room with the examiner, that's not a good approach, okay? So you need to have your brain working in English uh, before you walk into that test. You need to be practicing, okay? And uh, you can um, do that um, uh, in the, uh, on the website as well, okay? Uh, Viet Bach uh, is saying, no one can get IELTS 10, not except American. Viet Bach, the top score is a nine, so nobody can get a 10 um, because it doesn't exist. And uh, band nine, um, yeah, non-native speakers get band nine uh, often. Um, band nine is not about native speaking. Okay, just because you're a native speaker does not mean you get a band nine. A band nine, a perfect score, needs expert communication, and we will focus on that today. Um, strategy two to reach expert communication is focus on uh, key uh, strategies to include 
um, as you walk into your speaking exam and the examiner is giving you instructions. Okay, so some of the key uh, points here that you need to focus on is A, always think answer explanation example. Okay, always think answer explanation example. Okay, use numbers for your explanations. Okay, think about those two points uh, really importantly. Um, when you are in your IELTS speaking exam, what are some so what are some strategies that you should not use? What are some bad strategies? There are bad strategies uh, that people are teaching online. Uh, there are bad strategies that are rumors that uh, don't work um, that get you lower band scores. Can anybody tell me what are bad strategies? So what are mistakes in IELTS strategies? and communication that you should avoid uh, when answering questions. So, you know, I often start these classes by asking you what you should do because I'm telling you what you should do and we're going to practice what you should do uh, in uh, part one here very quickly. Um, at the same time, uh, I want to remind you of what you shouldn't do because you know a lot of people learn these bad strategies and then they use them during their speaking, they get a bad score, they don't know why, and it's because they're not communicating effectively, okay? It's not about I said this or John said that or Sarah said that on YouTube. Um, it's all about effective communication. High band scores are fluent, effective communication and that's logic okay so um, what should you not do okay um, Akira says uh, mem you should not try to memorize answers yeah so do not use memorized answers okay um, IELTS examiners will mark lower when they feel the student is using templates and memorized answers mm -hmm. that's a fact that's not me saying it that's a fact i'm a british council agent i speak with ielts examiners all the time i can tell you 100 percent that if you're memorizing answers and you're memorizing phrases um, and you're using them just forcefully, you will get a lower score, even if you have good English, okay? Um, all right. Okay, it has to sound natural, it has to sound original. Yeah, absolutely. All right, you definitely should not speak in your own language when you're at the exam. That's absolutely right. Okay. Uh, Karina says, do not use unreasonable idioms. Yeah, exactly. So do not uh, force uh, using idioms just to use them. Yeah, they can sound very confusing and awkward, uh, so you shouldn't do that, okay? Do not force idioms just to use them. Uh, keep your idioms simple, like phrasal verbs. They're considered idiomatic language. Okay, uh, phrasal verbs, the example would be like uh, came across uh, means to encounter, okay? So keep your idioms simple, don't force them. Yeah, um, Domenico says the examiner is well trained to spot memorized answers. Um, Domenico, it's not just that they're well trained, but uh, unfortunately when the 10th student on the same day says, um, for example, you know, let's go back to this memorized answers and phrases, okay? So um, when the 10th student or let's say candidate uh, says, um, I have 
many hobbies, but the one, or sorry, I should say habits. Today's focus is on habits. I have many habits, but the one I would like uh, to talk about today is waking up early because the early bird catches uh, the worm. Uh, there are a plethora of reasons I wake up early. Okay, um, so here, when the tenth student says this same kind of sentence, the examiner knows that this student is really just trying to force uh, memorized phrases, vocabulary, idioms uh, from the internet. Okay, it's obvious that too many people uh, have been. Um, looking at the same video online, okay? So, yeah, that's why they know. All right, um, what else should we not do? There's one that, um, Karina says don't talk informal. Nope, Karina, you can use informal language. Uh, you definitely want to sound professional, but that doesn't mean you can't use um, some informal language. So you can use language like gonna, and wanna, it's okay, as long as you also use formal language. So that's not true, okay? So you can uh, use informal language as long as you also uh, use formal language. Uh, you can say, I wanna do a master's uh, degree in the US because I want uh, to learn uh, English um, during my graduate uh, school, okay? So notice how I have wanna, which is informal, and then I also have want to, which is the formal version of that. You can do that, okay? As long as you're mixing the informal with the formal, it's okay. You just have to be careful with what kind of informal language. You should not use cursing, okay? That's, I mean, if you did, it's not the end of the world, but it just, it doesn't, it's not good communication. Um, and you should avoid some key words. Uh, nobody said those words, okay? Another really big no, and I, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous that after so many <laughs> instructions of saying this, I don't see anybody saying this. Um, let's see, yeah, so Chan Kip says don't use contractions, yep. Um, it's okay, Chan Kip, to use contractions, again, as long as you mix it with non-contractions, right? Um, so that's okay as well. What worries me a little bit is that I'm not seeing any of our members, I'm looking at the chat right now, um, or our students telling me not to use the word things, stuff, and you, okay? So do not use the words uh, things, stuff, and you. Why do I say that? So why do I say do not use the word uh, things, stuff, and you? Why? It's very important and the reason I'm always emphasizing this is because people do it all the time. Okay, native speakers do it, non-native speakers do it, and it's bad communication, but why is that? Okay, so it is bad communication, but why? Why is it bad communication uh, to use the word things, stuff, and you? And there's a very simple answer, and you could answer that in one word, okay? So why do we want to avoid the words uh, things, stuff, and you? Okay, Baljeet says because they are not specific. Zarina says because they have no value, yeah? You can even say it simpler with another word.
Yeah, Kyber says don't use you know because what we know the examiner doesn't necessarily know. Exactly. And Chai and Kip says don't use honestly. Yeah, avoid honestly. I agree. It's not a good word either. Uh, Chai and Kip says it's not professional. Uh, there, yeah, those are good answers. Um, simply put, everyone, it's um, inaccurate. Okay, they're just simply inaccurate words, okay? When you use the word you, you're not actually talking about the listener in many cases. When you use the words things and stuff, they're not accurate to the noun, the specific idea that you are trying to express. So you lose uh, coherence and you lose lexical resource marks. And your most important mark is coherence. So um, these words, cost you the most precious um, criteria for high scores. And that is coherence. How clearly you answer the questions, okay? So that's why you want to avoid those words. All right, well, let's get into some IELTS speaking part one without further ado, okay? And don't use for example, that's right, Rajveer, that's also another no. Okay, so let's get into IELTS speaking. So you keep all of this in mind, you practice all of this advice uh, before your IELTS exam, and then you get to your IELTS exam and the examiner starts off IELTS speaking part one. Uh, you walk into the exam room, you feel confident, not only because you know you have good English, but also because you know what it takes to communicate professionally, okay? So keep that in mind. I want you to keep this thought in mind. So you walk into your IELTS exam, not only because you have solid English, but also because you know what professional communication should be, okay? And that's what we just talked about right now. So you're, you're going in there, you're confident, the examiner greets you, they are also professional. They say, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. I'm recording this for clerical purposes. This is candidate number 95812278, examiner number 7951. Now we shall begin. The exam is conducted in Victoria. The time right now is 7.23 a.m. May I see your identification, please? Okay, what is your full name and may I see your identification? Those are going to be the first two questions. They have to make sure you are who you say you are. Use these questions to start your fluency. Use these questions to give nice, clear, professional answers. Okay? All right? Let's see what you come up. I'll give you an answer for this. I know a lot of you uh, we'll come up with a good answer here. So, um, remember what I've taught you before, yes? Uh, happily. Uh, here is my passport, which I used to register a few weeks back. Please take a look. So this is I'll speaking. Um, repeat after me, so copy what I say, repeat what I say, copy and repeat, okay. Um, may I see your identification, please? Yes, happily. Here's my passport, which I used to register a few weeks back. Please take a look. Okay, all right. Um, lots of different ways to answer this with a nice, fluent, full sentence. Don't just go yes here, okay? That's kind of like, what? Is this person fluent? Are they scared? What's going on? This is an exam. They need to show their English, okay? Uh, these are not English teachers, 
They're not going to be merciful. Uh, they have lots of uh, students, candidates to go through, uh, so they will just ask question after question. It's up to you to turn the conversation professional. It's not their job to make it professional. It's your job to make it professional. One way to do that is by uh, giving full sentence answers right off the bat, right from the beginning. Akira says, yep, gladly. Here is my passport that I used for registration. Use the noun there, Akira, registration. Uh, please have a look. I definitely would not use yep. Okay, that is an awkward way to start a conversation in a professional setting. Uh, yes, you can use um, informal language, but not as your first word, Akira. Okay, so if you use a bit of informal language later on, okay, but don't s start with yo, what's up? <laughs> right? Like, can you imagine if you walked in and you're like, yo, what's up? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> like a what? It's almost like that's where WhatsApp kind of gets its name for. It. Like, yo, what's up? Yeah. Um, here you go. Here you go. Okay. So n yeah, no, I would not recommend you uh, to um, answer in this way. So do not start informal. Okay. So I wouldn't be like, yo, what's up? Here you go. Okay. Uh, the examiner would be like, uh, what? <laughs> What's this person doing? Okay. Then you might get a laugh, but probably not good for your scores. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. So, um, yes, yes, Nepali says, Uh, where is that? Where is it? Yes, yes, Nepali. Yes, yes, Nepali says, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register for the test a few weeks back. Uh, please take a look. Oh, it's not showing up. Let me just try to grab just what you're saying and then hopefully that'll show up. There we go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yes, yes, Nepali says, yes, of course, here's my passport that I used to register for the test for a few years back. Uh, please take a look at my credentials. Okay, because that's what they're looking at is your credentials. So I would definitely, you know, uh, include that part, uh, Nepali, okay? All right, next question, what is your full name? Um, give a nice clear answer, continue to use full sentence uh, full sentences fluently, okay? So uh, my whole name is Andrea McAllister. Uh, please call me by my nickname, Andy, okay? So just a nice full sentence answer. Always let them know what you want to be called. If not, they will ask you. So they will say, what would you like me to call you? Um, some examiners will ask you that at the same time. So they'll say, what is your full name and what do you like to be called? Either way, just answer it. So my whole name is Andrea McAllister. Please call me by my nickname, Andy. Okay. Um, and then uh, you're good to go. So again, full sentence answer. Amrit says, my whole name is Amrit Paul Singh. Please call me Amrit for short. Amrit, that is perfect. Yeah, Amrit is definitely short for Amrit Paul. Uh, Kyber, good to see you in class, Kyber. I think you haven't been here in a while, but nice to see you in here and contributing. Uh, Kyber says, my full name is Kyber Momon. You can call me Kyber, bro. Um, yeah, Kyber, I think you're maybe making a joke there, but definitely leave the bro part out. I don't think the examiner will appreciate um, being called bro, uh, especially because you don't know them, right? So um, it's uh, it sounds a bit smug, if you will, okay? Ate Ride says, my complete name is Zoraida Lopez. Please call me Zoraida. Sure, okay, good. All right, and then you have some uh, get to know you questions. So a couple of icebreaker questions. These questions are designed to make you feel confident, comfortable. Um, use these questions to um, 
start your strategies. Okay, like numbers, all right? So where do you live? Full sentence answer, I live in a uh, three uh, bedroom detached house in the suburbs of uh, Victoria with my uh, parents and sister. I have lived there all my life. Okay, so that would be a nice full sentence answer. You might also say I live in a three bedroom house in Victoria, which is the capital city of the province of British Columbia in Canada. Okay, so small to big. What's important here is that you're giving fluency and you're using numbers like three bedroom, giving details. That's how you're picking up points for those high band scores like band eight, band nine, okay, even band seven. So band six is fluent. If you want to band seven, you have to be more than just fluent. You have to be detailed, original, good grammar, good vocabulary, okay? All right, uh, Chan Kip says, I live in a private house in the capital of uh, Indonesia. What's the capital of Indonesia? Okay, mention it, all right? Marty says, I'm currently residing in a rental room with my roommates during my first year of college near the capital city of Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Okay, good, that's a good answer. Okay, let me copy that one. That would, this answer, if I'm your examiner, would be a band nine because it sounds original, it's detailed, it's fluent. So if you give me this answer, I'm giving you a good score. Okay, this answer is by Marty Kuhn. Marty says, I'm currently residing. I like this word, residing. It's a nice paraphrase for living. In a rental room. <clears throat> rental room, great. I wonder if that's one word, no. Uh, probably hyphenate that. Rental room with my roommates, maybe not, yeah. Um, with my roommates during my first year of college near the capital city of Phnom Penh in Cambodia. Very good, okay, all right. Nice answer, we've got a few good answers there, excellent. And then another very common question um, is, do you have any hobbies? now? I know that a lot of students have heard this question a million times during their English language studies. What is your hobby? Do you have any hobbies? Okay. On the IELTS exam, you have to be excited about each question. So you can't be like, oh boy, again this question. Every English teacher is asking me this question doesn't matter, this is an exam, this is an IELTS examiner, it's not an English teacher. Um, be excited about every question. Even if you have heard it a million times learning English, okay? I guarantee you will have some unique questions, okay? Um, but you can't be melancholy, you can't be like, because if you're bored, if you're not, if you're disinterested, if you're not interested, right? If you're disinterested, then the examiner will feel that and it's not good communication. If you're like, I like watching movies. Okay. Why? Have you seen any movies recently? Right? So if you just feel super bored or boring, then that's not going to work, right? So... Um, you have to say, and don't say I have several hobbies, but the one I would like to talk about today, okay? It's a template, okay? So I have a few uh, different uh, pastime activities that I like doing, such as uh, going to the gym, uh, playing online games and uh, watching um, movies. Um, these 
hobbies help me uh, to stay healthy and relax. Last night, I finished uh, season four of Stranger Things and it was awesome. Very true, <laughs> actually. I did do that. Um, it's okay if you make up answers in the aisle. So if you just create an answer, uh, practice creating answers, imaginary answers for aisles, you do not have to tell the truth. And sometimes it's difficult to answer with the truth if you cannot think about it. So you have to be creative. Um, when you can use the truth, sure, it makes life easier, right? I did finish uh, season four of Stranger Things last night and it was awesome. Um, so uh, I'm using the truth here, all right? Okay, um, answer, explanation, example. I have a few different pastime activities that I like doing, such as going to the gym, playing online games, and watching movies. Uh, these hobbies help me stay healthy and uh, relax. Um, last night I finished season four of Stranger Things. It was awesome. Okay. Uh, just Meet Singh says, uh, yes, I have two important hobbies. First, I really like to learn new language, learn a new language, as it helps me to understand the world better better as well as I really love cricket as it assists me to mitigate stress. Um, assist is a bit of a weird word here as it, yeah, you don't want to repeat helps. I see why you're doing that, but still as it um, is a way for me, it's a bit more natural. Okay, so now it's good. Um, so yes, I have two important hobbies. First, I like to learn a new language as it helps me to understand uh, the world better. Um, commas come after the words and then there's a space as well as uh, I really love cricket as it is a way for me to mitigate stress. Then it's good, okay. Mafia Gaming Tech says, Well, I don't have an endless uh, list of hobbies like others. Basically, I have only one, which is traveling to new places for exploring new places in their culture. Um, okay, let's try to clean that up a little bit. Uh, I like it. I like it's original. Well, I don't have an endless list of hobbies like others. Um, like many others, not everybody has an endless list of hobbies. Basically, I have only one, which is traveling to new places um, to or for exploring uh, culture and scenery. Okay, uh, include an example. Okay, two weeks ago, I visited the uh, town of Parksville because of its uh, amazing beaches. Okay, so example, very important to get those higher band scores. Ex good examples, good smooth examples will help to bump your score up for sure by at least half band, but usually more like a full uh, band score, okay? All right, um, students, so that's what you want to do for the speaking. Answer, explain, example, and that's what we want to practice right now. So let's practice this with some live speaking. I'm going to show you, okay? So using written language uh, for spoken language is a great start to identify grammatical mistakes and uh, to clean up, clean up the language. But of course, at the end of the day, you have to speak and practice. So we've got lots of time to speak and practice, and we're going to do that now. 
Um, again, on our websites, uh, when you're applying for the premium package, you can use the code IDEA25 for a 25% discount. Keep that in mind, okay? And now I'm going to show you how you can speak with me. You notice I put on my headphones, that's because we're going to be speaking. Ideally, you want to have a uh, good internet connection, so Wi-Fi or LAN connection, uh, highly suggested. If you've got good data, um, that's fine too. Just be careful, of course, you use more data with audio. And um, in a perfect world, you test this system with another student before you volunteer. So you speak to another person in the chat and say, hey, let's check and make sure this works. Of course, this is for you to chat with not just me, but every other student there also regularly. So um, what we want to do is we want to go to the website aehelp.com, okay? So this web website is <clears throat> aehelp.com. It's short for academicenglishhelp.com, by the way. So aehelp.com, um, and then you want to create an account. If you have an account, just log in with your login credentials. If you do not have an account, then you can create a premium account by clicking the big red button, going through the payment options, or you can create a free account, a trial account, by clicking the green uh, try demo function, okay? Once you have done that, once you have created an account, um, go to your My Student account. The My Student account, um, you can't see it on my page, but it's just above my head. And then you go to your My Student account, and in your My Student account, you've got uh, computer-based practice exams, full interactive course, you've got uh, workbooks, um, practice exams, lesson videos for all the sections, audio CDs, uh, you've got writing services, and then you have this uh, student uh, partner speaking right there. And by the way, if you would like to book a mock IELTS speaking interview with me, you can do that by clicking the yellow button that's just behind my head there, okay? Um, and you can click the uh, student partner speaking for now. Okay, so student partner speaking. Click I accept and start speaking, okay? Now, again, make sure that um, you've tested your system. So once you click that, okay, uh, you have to accept the terms. Uh, basically, it means you're responsible. Please do not share personal information like your phone number or your address with other people for safety, security. You want to keep that private. Um, obviously, don't give strangers. You should be 18 using this system. You should be responsible for yourself. And then uh, you will um, see other users in here. So right now I can see that uh, Zarina is in here, Valentina is in here, Jusri, Yash, they're all in here. And you can send me a message, okay, um, by um, tapping on the blue envelope. Okay, so when you tap on the blue envelope, um, then you can send a message and say, I would like to volunteer, okay? Uh, you will see me as master. So click on master, say, I would like to volunteer. I'm just gonna, there we go. So just adjusting my headset there. Um, so again, you'll see master. You should see me in there as, as master. And then uh, blue envelope. Um, which is right there, say, I would like to volunteer. As soon as I have a volunteer, um, then uh, I will send a message back. My message will be, um, are you ready? And then as soon as you tell me that you're ready, then I will ask you a speaking part one question and um, give you some feedback on that, okay? So we have Yash here. Yash says, hello, sir. Hi, Yash, are you ready? Okay, uh, and we'll go one at a time. I'll ask every person one or two questions, give you feedback, we'll do a little repetition work and learn from each other. 
So the mistake that one person makes um, usually is a mistake that many others will also make. Uh, the improvements that I give you, uh, they're usually for um, many others as well. Okay, so Yash, are you ready to uh, practice? Yash says, yes, I am, which is great. Okay, here we go, Yash. Hello, Yash. Hello, sir. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you doing, Yash? Yes, I am doing great as well. Good. Yash, can you tell everybody where are you from? So what country, what city are you in? Yes, I am from the city named Ahmedabad, which is the capital city of Gujarat state, and I am from India. Okay, nice full sentence answer. That's a good indication. Uh, Yash, when the examiner hears you start like that, start your speaking right, like that, right away in the examiner's head, they're already thinking this is going to be a band seven or higher. So that's exactly how you want to start when you're speaking with the examiner, right? Nice, confident, full sentence answer. That's great. All right, Yash, okay. why are you taking the IELTS exam? Yes, exactly. I want to go for uh, my master's in Canada. That's why I am preparing for my arts examination. Nice, good use of the question. Okay, great. Well, um, let's uh, let's practice a little bit, and then I will give you some feedback. So, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. I'm Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Yes, sure. Here is my passport, which I used to register for this exam before two weeks ago. Now, he, here you can see my credential. Let's talk about habits. What are some negative habits? Uh, number of uh, negative habits, I don't have many. But uh, if I talk about, then uh, going very fast in a speedy, uh, like when I'm driving, those are some of my negative habits because uh, because it's uh, difficult uh, sometimes uh, because we don't have uh, uh, some traffic congestion so that's that might be dangerous sometimes do you so, have any habits you want to change yes i have a number of habits that i want to change because uh, i am not very good at uh, painting so I like to mm, change my painting habits because whenever I do paint and so that time I'm not getting correct correct painting and so I want to mm, change that uh, my painting habits I cannot make uh, good paintings I want to learn number of things on painting okay so uh, that would be about a band 6.5 to 7 as we're talking. But I think that you can get higher. I think that you can get 7.5 uh, for your speaking. You just have to change a couple of strategies and then you will do much better, okay? Uh, so okay. first of all, the start was good. So like I said, good fluency, good confidence. Uh, I asked you, can you show me your identification? You gave me a nice full sentence answer for that. That was good. Now. The first tip here, Yash, is don't overspeak, okay? You have to be more concise. So in your situation, you're talking too much, right? Um, students, yeah. <laughs> students often ask me, like, uh, what's the right amount? Like, how much should I talk? Yeah. There, there is no perfect answer to that, but you have to just use logic. So answer the question. Once you answer the question, stop speaking. Okay, so answer, okay. explain, example, stop. Um, what's happening in your situation is you're over explaining and you're over exemplifying. So you're giving too many examples, okay? Um, so I said, what are some negative habits? And you said, a number of habits, uh, I don't have many. If I talk about in the past, it's a bit of a long start to answer this question. You should be answering this a little bit simpler. Okay, so simply put, I don't have many bad habits like smoking and drinking. 
right? Those are okay. easy ones to think about because a lot of people have those, right? So I don't have any bad habits like smoking and drinking, but my bad habits are speeding. You don't have to explain speeding to me. Um, so you said like driving a car fast. Um, you don't have to explain it. The word speeding tells me that it means you're driving a car or a motor vehicle quickly, okay? So when you use the correct word, you don't have to explain that word, okay? Um, what's another bad habit that you might have? Okay, and if you don't know, just make it up, right? Um, waking up late, um, eating too much yes. sugar, okay? So, uh, but my habits are speeding and eating too much sugar. Maybe you're speeding because you're eating too much sugar, right? You're getting too excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> all right, so now, now you told me these, all right? Now, just simply say, and I would like to change these in the future, okay? Okay. okay, and then I asked you the question, uh, do you have any habits you want to change? And you said, yes, I have a number of habits I want to change. And you said, I'm not very good at painting. Um, that's not really a habit you want to change. That's yes. just a skill yes. that you want to improve. Okay. Yes, exactly. So that's a strange answer. It's an awkward answer to give. And that affects your coherence mark. So if you feel like, oh, this is a weird answer. I'm giving this examiner a weird answer. Just stop and change your answer. Okay. Um, so you can say like, um, just a second. Um, let me let me start that again you can do this you can say just a second let me start that again okay now you don't want to do this for every question but if you do it for one or two questions in part one and three it's okay you could say just a second let me start that again um, I yes. would like to uh, be a more careful driver and eat less sugar so that I am not a danger to myself and society. Um, I have been focusing on this for the past few months. Okay, and now it's much more accurate. Let's try this with a bit of repetition, Yash. Okay, so the most important tip here, Yash, is be more accurate, keep your answers a little bit shorter and to the point, okay? Yes, exactly. All right, okay, so let me do this again. Let me just repeat the question, the answer, and then copy me, okay? So what okay. are some negative habits? Um, I don't have many bad habits like smoking and drinking, but my bad habits are speeding and eating too much sugar, and I would like to change these in the future. What are some negative habits? I don't have many habits. Uh, I don't have many bad habits like smoking and drinking, but my bad habits are speeding and eating too much sugar. And I would like to change this in the future. Okay, second one. Um, do you have any habits you want to change? Um, just a second. Let me start that again. I would like Am to I be audible? more care. Yeah, so the second. Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, so Am I audible to you? Yeah, yeah, you are, Yash. Yes. Okay, so the second hello? one. Yeah, I can I can hear you. If you can't, hello, I can hear you, Yash. Let me message you. Maybe hello. You're... I can. We can hear you. Okay, I think Yash is maybe having some. Uh... Hello. Yep. Yash, I think that it's your headset. Maybe your battery died in your headset or something. If you're using a separate mic, so yes, you are. Um, anyhow, uh, hello. Yep, Yash, we can still hear you. <laughs> okay, I think Yash has a, had a system failure there, so I'll say goodbye to Yash for now. But the idea hello. is to repeat the second sentence here as well. Okay, um, and here the second sentence is connected to the first one. Okay, Yash, I'm going to end the call now and then we'll reconvene later. All right, bye, Yash, thank you so much. Okay, I don't think Yash heard me there. That was the problem. Um, so um, I'm just going to send him a quick message, okay? And give him a thumbs up. Good job, Yash. Good job, Yash. Uh, we did hear you.
All right, there we go. Okay, let's move on to the next volunteer. Let's do a bit more practice, bit, bit more feedback. So the key point there um, with Yash is that you don't want to overspeak, okay? The examiner should not be interrupting you, all right? Thank you for the thumbs up, Zarina and Carolina. All right, let's see who else is here. We have a Valentina here. Valentina, are you ready? I believe Valentina has volunteered before. She's from Romania, if I remember correctly. Well, let's see if Valentina is here. We've got lots and lots of volunteers now, which is fantastic. I will try to get to as many of you as I can, okay? Hopefully, uh, and hang in there, students. So I usually spend about uh, five minutes per student, roughly. So if you can wait a little bit, then that's a good idea. And learn from each other, right? Don't just expect to learn from personal interaction. Okay, Valentina. Hello, Valentina. I hear that you picked up, but I do not hear your voice. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, maybe check your system. I think we've had a discussion before, so um, check to see if something is different if you're using a different browser or a different device. Okay, and then try back. Um, all right, uh, let's um, try Sarah. So Sarah, are you ready? Uh, I don't go in order, by the way, students. I go random. I jump around a little bit just so everybody feels that you know there's a fair chance um, for speaking, whether you're at the top or at the bottom or in the middle of the list on my screen. I move around. So um, Sarah, are you ready um, to volunteer? Okay, we've got a couple second delay, uh, so. I think six seconds. By the way, uh, students, this is why Light Hall is really good because Light Hall has no lag, okay? And we seem to have lost Sarah, which is all right. El Murad, I think is a new person. Let's try El Murad. Are you ready? El Murad. Um, yeah, Light Hall is excellent for this, by the way. Our Light Hall class is coming up this month. Just a heads up. Okay. Uh, Lucy Malones, if you want to volunteer, um, please use the website aehelp.com and that's where you can send me a message to volunteer. Okay. All right. Let's try Almorad. Hopefully, they have a good setup. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Almorad. I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. <laughs> awesome. Um, Elmerod, may I ask, where are you in the world right now? Uh, I'm from Uzbekistan, in the south of Uzbekistan, actually, in Surkhan area. Okay, south of Uzbekistan. Can you repeat the name of the city just one more time? Surkhan area. Surkhan, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, in the uh, IELTS, or when you're speaking to someone who um, does not speak your language or not from your region, any words like name of a city or the name of a restaurant, you want to really pronounce clearly and slowly because it will be hard for them to catch it otherwise, okay? Okay. So that's just an important tip. So don't say it like you're saying it to your friend, but say it like you're saying it to a two-year-old child, okay? If you're telling me about names of cities okay, okay. in Uzbekistan I'm like a three-year-old okay <laughs> so okay all right all right Elmrod and why are you taking the IELTS exam I want to study abroad uh, such as Korea or Germany or England okay uh, wow that's quite quite the spread <laughs> Germany England Korea um, yes, it's interesting me. a lot of people want to study in Korea these days um, why do you want to pursue your studies in Korea um, Firstly, the salary is so higher than our country there, uh, so that and the educational quality is very um, sensible. Yeah, you can just simplify it. You can just say it's very good, right? 
Yeah. So, yeah, okay. Um, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I lived in uh, Japan many years ago for, for a year, um, and I taught English there. And the reason I was there was because the salary for teaching English in Japan was very good, and they have a very uh, evolved uh, society, um, socially, yeah, technologically. But I so. think they are not the same, but they are different, I think. Yeah, um, Korea and Japan are definitely uh, different. Um, they uh, they actually get quite um, stressed when you compare them to each other because they've had bad history in the past. Um, but um, but in many ways they are similar. I I have found. Um, okay. Anyhow, on to uh, our specific topic here. So let me help you with um, the IELTS uh, with speaking part one. I will ask you a couple okay. of questions. Give me some nice full sentence answers. Um, focus to include explanations and examples and then once you feel like you gave the answer explanation example then just stop and let me ask you the next question okay. so here we go let's talk about habits okay. uh, what are positive routine behaviors uh, the positive hobbies uh, in these days like reading cycling and jogging are very helpful for people these days because uh, they are very helpful for health and communication educational sites. Do you have any of these? Yes, uh, as for me I jog every day from 5 to 6 a.m. every day and this is very helpful for my health. Okay, good, that's a great start. So that would be, uh, again, um, I think a, a, you'd get a 6.5 for that. Um, you're fluent, no question, and you're between a fluent and a good speaker, I, I believe. I think you can make it into a good speaker, so you should aim for at least a seven. Uh, let me show you how. So I said, what are positive routine behaviors? And you said uh, the positive hobbies in these days um that the in these days was a bit strange because you know reading cycling jogging those have been some positive um behaviors i think for a long time well over a hundred years so it's not just these days uh yeah. and then um you repeated the word helpful a couple of times and it was a bit awkward and then i said do you do any of these and then you said yes as for me that was nice um, I jog every day from 5 to 6. That was very nice. I like how you used uh, quantification, so AM. Uh, and then you said, and that's very helpful for my health, um, which is a good explanation. Okay, so what's missing here? Okay. What do you think is missing from your answer to make it even better? Mm, maybe some advanced vocabulary? No. Um, yeah, I mean, you can always improve vocabulary, grammar, you can, you know, up your game with the communication. But there's a, a very simple element or simple piece that's missing that could easily bump your score by half a band or maybe even more if you pay attention to this. What's that? It's your example. So just to add fluency, to add um, more clarity, right? So do you do any of these? Yes, as for me, I jog every day from 5 to 6 a.m. And that's very helpful for my health. This morning, I went uh, for a good okay. run. I forgot it. Uh, around my uh, university uh, campus. And um, this is helping me focus on this exam. Okay. So just like that, okay. and boom, you've got another half a band to a band for that question, no problem, okay? Let's just practice okay. this last question here. So again, really just smooth example, okay? Answer, explain, smooth okay. example, then stop, okay? So okay. Do, you, do you do any of these? Yes, as for me, I jog every day from five to 6 a.m. and that's very helpful for my health. This morning I went for a good run around my university campus and this is helping me focus on this exam. Uh, do you have any of these? Yes, as for me, I jog every day from 6. Hello, can you hear? Yeah, I can, yeah. Uh, I have a call and start with me. Can, can, I rip, can I start again? Yes, go for it. Yeah, as for me, I jog every day from 5 to 6 a.m. Uh, like this morning, I jog around my 
uh, university campus and this is helping me to focus on my exams and studies. Okay, that was good, but this time you left out the explanation and that's very helpful for my health. So yeah, that that okay. happens, okay? That's okay because okay. you're yeah. helping me to show a very important point here. So this is what often happens with candidates is they leave out either the explanation or the example. What's really yeah, important I, is that you include both the explanation I and the example. I by my mom phoning me. Okay, okay, well, better pick up the call just, from mom and then we'll talk yes. later, okay? Okay, just one question. Go for it. Uh, I bought the course uh, recently, so, no, five minutes ago, and I can't access this course. Okay, what you need to do is send an email and we'll take a look at your account and I'm sure we can fix that for you, okay? So just send I me send a... It, yeah? yeah, I sent a message and I'm looking forward to checking it okay did you send the message within the last 24 hours yes okay good. okay good then you should have that fixed uh, soon if you don't get a response from us um, after 48 hours that means your mail got lost or didn't come through or something happened so uh, make sure to then resend it again but we should respond if you've sent it within 24 hours then you will have that fixed for you okay Almorad okay thank you all right, thanks for your patronage and uh, pick up the phone from mom. It's important, okay? Okay. All right, bye Almorad, thank you so much. All right, that was Almorad, give Almorad a thumbs up. Yeah, um, of course, just like with any other app on your phone, uh, if somebody calls you while you're uh, talking, then uh, that will interrupt the, um, the communication as phone calls always supersede apps. It's a safety feature on phones. Um, and uh, Almorad was asking about our full course. Thank you, Almorad, for buying our full course. He said he's having some kind of issue with the access. If you ever have any kind of difficulty accessing the course or your our products, just send us an email. We'll fix it for you. Um, all right, uh, let's um, let's go to somebody else here. We've got lots and lots of volunteers. I'm just looking up and down the list. Uh, Zarina, I believe one of our members here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let's see if Zarina is here. Zarina, are you ready? All right. And I appreciate the thumbs up uh, for Almorad and the support in the chat. That's really good. Okay, here we go. Hi, Zarina. Hi, sir. Good evening. How are you doing? Good morning. Zarina, can you tell our listeners where you are in the world right now? Sir, uh, wait a second. I'll just mute the, the YouTube. Okay, sounds good. Yep, then you won't get the voice twice. Here we go, sir. All right, Zarina. So um, I'm just asking, can you tell us where you are in the world right now? I'm currently here in the Manila, in the capital city of the Philippines. All right, Manila, capital city of Philippines. That's quite the city. Um, I, I watched a movie called Metro Manila, and it was quite incredible. Um, <laughs> okay, sir. All right. Um, Zarina, do you know why I ask, by the way, students, uh, why that's my first question, where they are in the world? It's kind of a weird question to ask you, but I'm wondering mm, if you know. Why, why, do I ask? Why, do yeah. ask people, why do I ask people that? Where are you from? Maybe I, uh, you just want to let the audience know that uh, it's working here in the Philippines. <laughs> the Good answer. Channel. Good answer, but um, no. <laughs> like, I like, like it. the other. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I, I, that's great. Um, and, you know, in the aisles. There are other countries that there are. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, in the aisles, this is. That doesn't work. No, it's not. Not exactly. I think it'll work in most countries, okay. especially with VPN. Um, no, uh, but I like how you answered. And on the IELTS, that's what you want to do is you want to give an answer if you feel you have an answer. On the IELTS, by the way, I would accept your answer because I don't judge 
the truth of the answer. It's just, it's a good answer. So on the IELTS, that would be okay, Zarina. Uh, the reason I ask students as the first question where they are is because that lets everybody kind of visualize and be empathetic to you. So we can see that, okay, here's this lovely woman who is in the Philippines in this big city of Manila and she's practicing her IELTS because she has some goals in life, okay? Um, yes. So it, it gives us context and that's good communication. That's why I asked you this kind of weird question because you <laughs> want you want context in your communication. So when you're speaking with the examiner, that's why this answer explanation example strategy and that's why the example is so important um, mm -hmm because it gives context to the communication, right? So it makes it so much better. All right, so that's the reason, it's context. Um, all right, but it's good to know that YouTube and the website works <laughs> as well. <laughs> so that's also good. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions here for speaking uh, part one. Yes, Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, Zarina, here we go. So. Have people's habits changed in the last 10 years in your country? Definitely that uh, habits have changed for this uh, past decades uh, because of this technology that's uh, uh, arising towards us, the humankind. We tend to become more uh, focused on our habits on gadgets and not uh, focusing on the the real concept of life of uh, relationship or more important things like studying or and communicating with other people like uh, like my youngest daughter we're, we're not uh, talking too much because uh, she's always on the phone right now. When is a good time to change a habit? Uh, the good time to change the habit is when you notice that it's not making any use to you, especially when it's uh not giving you more value in your life and when you notice that it needs to be changed like uh uh with this uh with the effect of this uh, technology we also tend to procrastinate our priorities okay that was very oh. good I feel frustrated in my answer. It's okay. It's it's a great start. Um, you shouldn't focus on your frustration. You should focus on why you're frustrated. So why are you not happy with your answer? Why are you not happy with your answer? I feel it's lacking contents. I actually think your content is pretty good. Okay. Um, so I... I I kind of disagree with you. I think your content is good. I think um, what you're saying is good. I think you can say it in a clearer way. So uh, what I would do here, Zarina, is um, re so if I were studying at home and I didn't have an Adrian to give me feedback, what I would do at this point is, of course, I would record my answers. Then I would write them down, just like what I did on the screen here is write them down. And then I would look at, you know, using Grammarly. I'm using Grammarly right now. You can see all these kind of underlined red uh, parts and I would see why is the grammar wrong there? What kind of words could I use to make this clearer or better? The content is good here. Okay, so let me go through this and make this correction. At home, you would want to do this as much as possible. Okay, so have people's habits changed in the last 10 years in your country? And then you said definitely um, habits have changed. Very nice, so the question was present perfect have people's habits changed and you paid attention. You said definitely habits have changed. So you use the present perfect in your answer. That was really good. You're picking up marks for grammatical accuracy and range. And then you said for this past decade, um, one decade, so not decades, uh, all right? So careful with your S, um, this past decade. Uh, past decade, that's 10 years. That was good paraphrasing. 
Okay, I like that. Good lexical resource. And then you were really clever, you said, because of this technology that is arising among humans or among the humankind. Okay, a humankind a bit over the top uh, that is um, arising in humankind. Now, pay attention to the question, Zarina. So are we talking about all of humankind in this question? <laughs> no. Right? Well, the last part of the question is in your country. Okay? okay. So answer it specifically, right? So sure, in sure. the uh, Philippines. Phil I can never spell Philippines. I always forget if it's the P or the L that's double. Um, because of this technology that is arising in the Philippines. Okay? So now you're specific to the question. Um, and then you said we tend to become more focused on our habits and gadgets. Uh, more focused on uh, gadgets and not focusing on real concepts of life like relationship and studies. Um, I don't know if it's real concepts or important parts of life is better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have to overcomplicate important parts of life like relationships or studies and then you got stuck <laughs> right I remember that I almost interrupted you with the next question um, and just I almost started my next question and then something in your head snapped it was like oh example right and then yes, you said yes. and you said oh like my youngest daughter <laughs> so you quickly started that was really good okay um, it was really good how you, you you quickly clued and you realized oh like my youngest daughter I hope it doesn't happen on the exam day. Um, well, hopefully by the time you get to the exam, the example is coming naturally and quickly, right? You don't have to realize that, oh, I'm missing the example. But here, that was good. You got it. So you did get it. You said, like my youngest daughter, we are not talking too much because she is always on the phone right now. You don't need the right now part, okay? Because she's not on the phone right now. She's always on the phone. Always yeah, and right exactly. now they don't make sense together so it's always or right now but not both so she's talking too much because she's always on the phone that was good now it's a great sentence okay and then I says I asked you when is a good time to change a habit and you said the good time to change a habit is when you were you here at the start of the class Serena I think you were yes sir okay I really was um, emphasizing yes. not using yeah. the word yeah. you, right? Don't use the word you, okay? <laughs> so a good time um, to change a habit is when a person notices. When a person. Okay? So either a person or talk about yourself, don't talk about you. So don't talk about the examiner, right? <laughs> sorry. So a good I'm sorry I talk about you. Yeah, I'm like, I don't have any bad... Excuse me, Zarina, I don't have bad habits as I take a sip of my coffee, right? Um, so a good time to change a habit is when a person notices that it is uh, not good um, for them. Uh, for them, uh, right? Like their health like their health or finances, uh, smoking or shopping too much, okay? Um, and then you said when you uh, notice that it needs to change. So when a person uh, notices that it needs to change, it needs to be changed. That's just repetitive, we can take that out. Now here, right, if I were you, I would have actually used the example of my daughter um, as the uh, explanation or the example here. So I would have said, uh, like with my daughter, um, with my daughter, I'm restricting her phone time uh, so that she can uh, focus more on her schoolwork and we can socialize um, in the evening, okay? So making connections between your answers right from the beginning, from part one, can really help you to get into those band eight, band nine scores because it just makes really good communication for the examiner. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. 
Okay, so uh, let me just repeat the answers. I'm not going to uh, ask the questions again, just the answers, and then just copy the answers, okay? So here we go. Um, definitely, habits have changed uh, in this past decade because of technology that is arising in the Philippines. Uh, we tend to become more focused on gadgets and not focusing on important parts of life like relationships or studies, like my youngest daughter. We're not talking too much because she's always on the phone. Yes. Have people's habits changed in the last 10 years in your country? Definitely habits have changed for this past decade. Because of this technology that is arising in the Philippines, we tend to become more focused on the gadgets and not focusing on the important matters in our life, especially relationships or studies. Like my youngest daughter, when uh, she always uh, use gadgets, we don't have much time to talk anymore. When is a good time to change a habit? A good time to change a habit is when a person notices that it is not good for them, like their health or finances, smoking or shopping too much. Like with my daughter, I'm restricting her phone time so that she can focus more on her schoolwork and we can socialize in the evening. When is a good time to change a habit? A good time to change a habit is when a person notices that it is not a good it's not good for them like their habits or finances smoking or shopping too much like with my daughter i'm restricting her phone time so that she can focus more on her schoolwork and we can socialize in the evening those are band nine answers okay so if you say it like that you're on your way to a band nine no questions okay it's not it's not even a maybe for the examiner it's a for sure all right so that's how you do it okay so remember what i told you zarina the step to achieve that when you're not practicing with a person like me is to record your answers write them down grammar check them Check them for okay, con sir. check them for content first. So first of all, make sure that you're you know you write Philippines instead of in the world or for humanity, yes, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you have the correct content, then check for grammar and then repeat the answer. And you'll train your brain to just communicate more accurately and at a higher level, right? Okay, sir. Okay, um, Zarina. Awesome job, and make sure your Thank daughter you, doesn't use the phone too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, bye, Zarina. See you later on. Bye. All right, that was Zarina, everybody, um, from the Philippines, from Manila, and she's doing an awesome uh, job, so let's give her a thumbs up. Um, working hard, hardworking mom, looking to improve life with English and with um, worldly uh, goals and plans, and that's great. Okay, fantastic. All right, students, um, let's take one more. We've got time for one more in this class. Um, so let's, and this is for everybody, right? So everybody should um, pay attention to this advice. So this advice that I gave to Zarina, that's for everybody, okay? Uh, Duvan, let's see if Duvan is ready. Okay, Duvan, are you ready? Okay, here we go. If Duvan is still with us, we'll reach out to Duvan. Rajveer says, please take Rajveer um, next time, Rajveer. I don't see you anywhere. Uh, send me a message, students. Whoever wants to volunteer, make sure you send me a message. I didn't see any message from you. Okay, let's check out Duvan. Hi, Duvan. Oh. Hi, Duvan. Hi. Um, Duvan, can you mute YouTube? We're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah, I already muted. Okay, awesome, Duvan. Um, so, Duvan, uh, where are you right now in this big, beautiful world? Well, I'm living in Ibagué. It is close to the capital in Colombia, Bogota. Ibaque, close to the capital of Bogota in Colombia. I know somebody else who is originally from Colombia. Hint, hint. Let's see if we get a smile in the chat. Um, that's great, Duvon. Um, so uh, we can now be empathetic. We can all be with you in Colombia. I would love to visit Colombia one day, by the way. I think it's a fantastic place. Um, all right, uh, Duvon, why are you taking the IELTS exam? 
Uh, I'm moving to Canada next month in August, maybe 11th. So okay. I want to apply there, being there for a master or maybe a college diploma or something like that. Okay, good for you. Yeah, absolutely. What part of Canada are you moving to? Toronto. Toronto. You will be almost as far from me then than you are now. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you located? I'm in Victoria, so on the other oh, oh. side other side of Canada. So you will still be about a five-hour flight from where I am. <laughs> okay. All right, that's how big Canada is. So you're moving from Colombia to Canada, but you're, no, you're going to be closer, obviously. Colombia is a bit further away, but, uh, but still very far. Um, all right, Duvon. Well, uh, that's a great goal. Um, learning education uh, is um, one of the greatest joys in life. I truly believe that and good for you to pursue uh, more studies. Let me help you with your IELTS. Let me ask you a few questions. Are you ready? More than ready, sir. All right. Sounds good. Um, so uh, let's talk about habits. Uh, what are some negative habits? Mm, that is a good question, though. Uh, negative habits like smoking or drinking um, isn't aren't uh, aren't good enough for people but I would like to say that a bad habit for me is to waking up so um, late I'm trying to figure it out to uh, being better in that that part so I'm working on that uh, do you have any habits that you want to change? Uh, as I said before, I definitely want to change my my waking late habit because my day mm, almost mm, start late, so there is not some, there is not enough time to do all the things that I want to do, even if I mm, put all my effort to schedule my time in the afternoon. What are positive routine behaviors? Um, I, I would like to say like uh, going to the gym or eating healthy food. It is a, a, are, are a good habit for your body, for your brain and, and for your daily routines. Do you have any of these? Yes, definitely. I go into the gym every day, like 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. So I'm really happy for one of my goals that I uh, reached, that I keep, sorry, um, two days before. And I leave uh, 80 pounds on a hip thrust exercise. Uh, have people's habits changed in the last 10 years in your country? Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Have people's habits changed in the last 10 years in your country? Mm, yes, definitely. Mm, maybe young people are most focused on study programs uh, than the old people who are most focused on Nintendo games or uh, PS4, PS5 games. So that makes me happy because the young people are most focused on working on themselves and they are good enough for Colombia because we are um, a little bit... Um, we, we don't have enough scores on the... on the... Um, I forgot the name. But on, on the exams, the national exams. Okay. Good. It is Colombia with O C O L. -O. <laughs> I bet there's somebody yeah. else laughing. Yeah, because <laughs> Carolina knows why I make that mistake, <laughs> right? Because see how um, Grammarly is giving me both c o l u m b i a and it also says columbia c o l o m b i a do you know why i make that mistake uh i don't know 
because I live in the province of British Columbia oh, and okay. British Columbia is spelt with a U <laughs> and okay. Carolina is originally from Colombia and she always catches me on that. She's like, Adrian, it's Columbia with an O, not with, not with a U. <laughs> I'm just, just imagine how many times I type my province as named British Columbia. So my fingers naturally just type a U. Um, all right. So if you move to Canada and you're uh, writing the province of British Columbia, it's with a U. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I have to be prepared for that uh, mistakes, but I'm gladly happy to correct the people or and say how to uh, how to write Columbia. Right. Uh, right. Right. Um, okay, so that was pretty good. Okay, so I think that you're definitely in the band um, six to six five. Uh, for you, I would definitely suggest uh, focusing a bit on grammar. Okay, so uh, there were a couple of awkward grammar mistakes. I can still understand what you're saying, but definitely clean up a little bit of the grammar, and you'll be a bit more accurate. Okay. Um, so what are some negative habits? Um, that is a good question. Okay, yeah, I guess it's a good question. I think it's maybe unnecessary, but okay. Um, there are negative habits like smoking or drinking. Um, and you have a missing word here that aren't good enough for people that aren't good for people sometimes you're using extra unnecessary words so careful with that like enough here that aren't good for people and then you said but I would like to say that a bad habit for me before you say that you should say why they're not good for people right um, that aren't good for people's health okay so that one word is so important but I would like to say that a bad habit for me is waking up late. Um, what's another way to say waking up late? Mm. Sleeping in, sleeping in, okay. Oh. So when we oversleep, another way to say it is oversleep, of course, but we often say sleeping in. So a bad habit for me is sleeping in. It means you basically oversleep, like you should be getting up an hour earlier to get to school or to get to work comfortably, but you're sleeping in, you're hitting that snooze button uh, too many times, okay? Um, and then you said, I'm trying to uh, change this habit. You started to overspeak there. Okay, so uh, instead of saying that, you should give an example. Like you should say, uh, this morning, I woke up so late that I almost missed this exam. <laughs> okay. It's okay to tell the examiner that. <laughs> they might get a smile. Um, so answer, explain, example, and work on the grammar. That's what you want to focus on, okay, throughout the whole um, kind of session that's really what was the the redundant or repetitive uh, mistake so let's just do one repetition here so that it's clear in your mind and then you can keep practicing okay are you ready yes I'm ready okay so what are some negative habits mm, that's a good question there are negative habits like smoking or drinking that aren't good for people's health but I would like to say that a bad habit for me is sleeping in. Uh, this morning I woke up so late that I almost missed this exam. Uh, what are some negative habits? That is a good question. There are negative habits like smoking or drinking that aren't good enough for people's health. But I would like to say that a bad habit for me is waking up, is sleeping in. This morning, I woke up so late that I almost missed the exam. Okay, good. Now, careful with that fossilized mistake, good enough. So it sounds to me like saying good enough is fossilized and you're speaking, it means that you naturally say good with, together with good enough or aren't good enough. So careful, we don't always um, put those two words or collocate those two words good enough. Okay. Okay, so aren't good for people's health. So try to take out the word enough from that um, okay. phrase, okay? Pay careful okay. attention to that. All right, thank you so much uh, for uh, volunteering, Duvon, and um, see you next month in Canada. Of course. <laughs> All right, have thank a good flight, so have a good trip. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, Duvon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now. Bye. All right, that was Duvon. 
um, from Colombia. So we've basically, we've had people from just about every corner of our big, beautiful world. Um, students, uh, make sure to use this website um, to practice with each other, not just me, practice with each other. You've got lots and lots of uh, speaking scripts right there. So you've got um, 15 full IELTS speaking scripts with part one, part two, part three right there that you can click on, okay? Um, and uh, thanks for the support, everybody. Um, be sure to uh, visit our um, website, aehelp.com, uh, for academic IELTS success. Click this big red button uh, to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Uh, we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS test preparation. Uh, for general IELTS, same idea, green background, giltshelp.com. Uh, again, you can use that discount code IDEA25 for a 25% discount. Okay, uh, so um, here you can see aehelp.com for academic IELTS, giltshelp.com for general IELTS. Okay. Uh, go to the websites, uh, come back tomorrow for uh, more reading and listening skills. Tomorrow, uh, two classes, uh, we'll have one for members, uh, one for subscribers. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, click the notification button so that you know when we have these live classes. Carolina, Columbia with an O, I will fix my fossilized mistake, I promise you. Uh, thank you, Carolina, for moderating this class. Thank you, uh, members, for your support. And thank you, viewers, for being here with me today. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here in British Columbia with a U <laughs> for now. And I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Much love. Bye.